In today's episode of Homestead How, welcome to our small town, world famous, or soon to be world famous, Montello Theater. In today's episode, we're gonna take you behind the scenes of a weekend running our theater with my family, and we're gonna tell you which movie theaters you should go to and why it can still be very affordable to take your entire family out to the movies. It's been just over four months since my wife and girls and myself took over our small town movie theater and reopened it. Are you nuts? And we love movies, we love the history of the building, and we love seeing movies every weekend, but the best part has been the power of our community and the experience of meeting positive people, really good people, and making friends with so many people. We're gonna talk about that in today's episode, and we're gonna have a lot of fun running our small town movie theater and showing you behind the scenes. Let's get started. It's a cold and snowy morning, our driveway's blocked by the snow, but that's not going to stop us from clearing a path so we can get to our 1859 building that houses our movie theater. We're going to have some family fun along the way, show you behind the scenes. At first, I've got to clear some of this snow out of the way. When we purchased our homestead seven years ago, I didn't put enough thought into having a super long driveway. It is a blessing and it is a curse. It's a lot to maintain. Our first year here, I used an old 1959 tractor to plow it, but that was really cold. And then a couple of years ago, I upgraded and I purchased this nice plow. And it's been uh, one of my favorite purchases since. It's really helped us out. We have a vacation rental on our homestead. That's how we help pay for our homestead. So. It's really important we have a nice, clean driveway. Before heading over to the movie theater, I was in charge of dinner tonight and I made a really nice Tuscan keto chicken dinner. Very little carbs in this with a side of cream spinach. It turned out pretty good. I think it's gonna be a new favorite. The girls really liked it too. Come on, lock the door, it's cool. Let's all go to the movies. Let's all go to the movies. Hello? Let's all go to the movies and have ourselves some E.T. Hey, how was your night? Why are you, why are you so quiet? Did you get into the Reese's Pieces again? Dude! Not cool. We purchased the movie theater four months ago because we fell in love with the building when we moved to our homestead seven years ago. And we love movies. We go there all the time. It's one of our favorite things to do. And I also love the history of the building. One thing I didn't realize I would love so much about running the theater, and I've realized now that we're on month four, is the people. There's just so many great people that we've talked with at the theater and become friends with. We have so many regulars and people that just love the theater and have been coming there their entire lives. As we were opening the theater up, a car pulled up, a man came into the theater and he said, I was at the theater last night for a movie and Jen and I were like, oh no, I hope nothing went wrong. And he put a quarter down on the counter and he said, I paid you $5 for the ticket, but it was $5.25. I couldn't get any sleep last night. Here's your quarter. That's just one quick story about some really good people that have been coming into the theater. So many nice and positive stories like that over the last four months. Something I didn't anticipate purchasing the movie theater, but the people, the patrons, the people that love the theater they've been coming in have all been amazing. And we're very thankful for it. And it's time to make some popcorn. The movie isn't even... Yeah, that's just the larger kernels. Does it taste better? Huh? We switch our popcorn 
a couple of weeks ago when I accidentally ordered a whole bunch of baby kernels and we had to go through six bags of those. It was really good. That was the one that we taste tested. This is the regular kernel, so they're much larger. It's the same brand though. Last weekend we played A Man Called Otto starring Tom Hanks and we sold out every day of the weekend. We're very thankful for that. We're playing this movie once more this weekend and I expect it's going to be very busy. And one area that is always busy is our concession area. It's always busy before showtime. People are excited to grab their favorite snacks. It's packed with family, friends, couples. Everyone's always excited for the movie experience and we're always friendly and chatting with folks before and after the movie and you can really feel the excitement in the air especially with this movie we've had so many people coming to see this movie two or even three times and you hear the whole audience laughing and then people are crying and laughing and crying and really a great experience and this first showtime we had was very similar to last week we didn't quite sell out but we sold a ton of seats and came very close again here from the world famous Montello Theater and I am sitting in our wood seats along with E.T. who keeps following me around everywhere. They had these seats in this theater for decades. Over the weekend we had someone make a comment but someone said why don't you get those uh, reclining seats like they have in Portage and here's my answer to that question. At one time there were 550 seats in this theater. Then they upgraded to these wooden seats that were here for decades and they had 200 of those seats. Then the previous owner upgraded to these seats that you could see over here and they went down to 150. And what happens is every time you get seats, they get larger and they get more comfortable but they go down in numbers. So we went from 500, which is just crazy, they had 500 seats in here, down to 200 wooden seats, down to 150 seats. These are bigger, they're more comfortable. Now when you go to those reclining seats, what ends up happening is we would probably have half as many seats. We would go from 150 down to 75. So when you go to movie theaters that have those big, comfortable reclining seats, there's usually half as many seats, but you notice something that they do is they end up charging twice as much because they gotta pay for that somehow. So it's just, it's simple business. It's like supply and demand. You have fewer seats, you're gonna end up charging more money. I don't think we will ever upgrade to those recliner style uh, seats. I like the charm of the old theater, plus these seats are actually very, very comfortable. And the thing that I don't like with those big reclining seats are, I end up falling asleep in them. I think they've gone too far. It's like, if you imagine the evolution of movie theater seats from the wood ones weren't that comfortable, these ones are more comfortable, then they slightly reclined a little bit, well now they have ones that completely recline back and people are just falling asleep and like what's next, you're gonna have like a Serta bed there with a little blankie that you're gonna go in? It's like too much. As for the Portage Theater, go visit them. I think they have a great theater there. I've been going to the Portage Theater for years now. And I know that's weird me saying that because they're my competition that's kind of like McDonald's saying, yeah, go over to Burger King. They got some great burgers. But I guess we are different than other businesses. I would never talk bad about competition. And we're different in the fact that our goal isn't to make money. We've been doing this for four months now and we haven't taken a single penny for ourselves to pay ourselves. This is a passion project. We love the theater. Our goal isn't to make money. Our goal is to have a family friendly, fair theater. I hate it when things are not fair and I hate it when you take a family of six like myself. I have a family of six and you go to the theater and you pay $120 by the time you pay for all of the tickets and the concessions. When you go to a movie theater and they charge you like $15 for popcorn, it's so unfair and it's so unnecessary. One of the reasons I hate it so much too is we follow a lot of uh, Facebook groups and Reddit groups about movie theaters and the number one comment I keep hearing families say, rightfully so, is we love going to the theater, who can afford going to the theater anymore? And to those people, there's still an option. I just want people to know there is still an option. A lot of people just default and they say like, oh, who can afford a car these days? Well, and a lot of those people that say that end up going to the dealership and they end up buying a brand new car. There's other options than buying a brand new car and there's other options than going to the big, huge warehouse multiplex movie theaters that have 20 different screens. Now, when you go to one of those theaters and the CEO is off on some island somewhere and gets a $10 million bonus, Think of why you're paying so much money for that. They have to heat that whole building. They have to put electricity in that whole building. They have to pay for dozens and dozens of employees at that whole building. That's not your only option. You can come out to a wonderful, historic, 
building independently run movie theater. They're all over the country. There's thousands and thousands of independently run movie theaters all over the United States. And you probably just don't know about it, but if you do a little research, maybe you can find one. Like our theater here, it's always $5 for a ticket. You can come see a new movie. We just played A Man Called Otto, brand new movie, $5. Our small popcorn, it's $2. Why are we doing that? Because I think it's fair because I love the movies and I want people to be able to still come to the movies, but there's a lot of other really, really wonderful independently run movie theaters that aren't going to fleece you, that aren't going to charge you $22 for a large combo with some sodas. It's just ridiculous what some of those places are charging people. I totally get it that people can't afford it. And you may be saying, well, it's just out in small towns that they have movie theaters like this. There's actually a lot more than you probably realize. Let's say you live in Milwaukee, for example. One of my favorite theaters, which I've mentioned on the channel before, is the Town Cinema in Watertown. It's run by my friend, Matt. Guess how much they charge for a ticket? They have a couple screens, a great theater, very fair prices, so much history. They charge $3, $3 dollars for a movie theater ticket. You can go and see a new run movie for three bucks. They will treat you fairly and they've got good customer service and you can talk to Matt. He's like the nicest guy in the world. That's one of the things when you go to an independently run theater. You come in here and you're going to talk to myself or Jen. At the end of the day, we talk to everybody. How was the movie? Did you enjoy it? We, it's like standing around the water cooler. It's really fun. We got extra popcorn. We just gave it away for free at the end of the movie. Those are the kind of things that you'll get from an independently run theater that you're not going to get going to one of those big multiplexes. And you could even, even with gas prices so high, travel out further to go to a movie theater like an independently run one and still save a bunch of money versus if you go to one of those big multiplex warehouses where you end up paying $120 for a family of six to see one movie. It's not sustainable. So that's my little rant on that. I would never talk bad about the competition. So when someone uh, mentioned the Portage Theater, I guess most people in my position would be like, oh, don't go over there, just come to our theater. I'm not gonna say that. They're not competition to me because my goal isn't to get rich off of this or to make any money. My goal is to have a fair movie theater with fair prices. The Portage Theater is a wonderful theater. Jen and I still go there now. Um, but the reason that we don't have that is because we charge $5 a ticket. I don't want to have half the seats and end up charging $10 a ticket. Go check out independently run movie theaters. They're amazing and they're all over the country and there's thousands and thousands of them. Hello? Is anybody going to say goodnight to E.T. or just leave him there? Look at him. He's so sad. It's so sad. <laughs> I'm not feeling the love. Oh, oh. We're going to see if we can just get down the driveway. I'll be happy. And I have to ask Jen, which one do you want me to put up? Because we have the new, I'm just opening this, the new Guardians of the Galaxy. This is choice one, we'll do Ant-Man. Ant-Man and Guardians of the Galaxy. Or there's one other one here. I was wondering what she thought about this one. Oh! Oh, you already know my answer. Ah, uh, that's my guy. You got him everywhere. I, I, uh, I'm actually really looking forward to this movie. The new Indiana Jones movie coming out this year. Ant-Man coming out this year. Guardians of the Galaxy. If you've never seen Guardians of the Galaxy, you are doing yourself a disservice. Over here in our little office, we got the Home Alone thing up there that's kind of cool, but here's the other Harrison Ford that we get to look at. Oh yeah, that does look pretty good there. Yeah, he does. I'll be in here all day. What a cool poster. Thank you so much for watching our weekend at Montello Theater. We played a man called Otto, and guess what? 
We're gonna go for a third weekend. We had a lot of people that weren't able to see it yet and we had some scheduling issues with the other movie we we're gonna play. We're gonna still play that other movie, I'm hoping very soon, but we're gonna be playing A Man Called Otto again, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, seven o'clock, seven o'clock, four o'clock. A lot of people have been asking for an earlier movie at like one or two, and we are definitely gonna to try to do that. Um, after this movie, we're gonna be playing 80 for Brady for two weekends, and we're gonna do a one o'clock showing over one of those weekends. I would do that a lot more. We've had a couple requests for it, one of the reasons we haven't done earlier movies is we've had a lot of private bookings, which is great. We really appreciate it. That's a way we can keep our prices down low and fair. In fact, on Saturday, we have two private parties. So before our seven o'clock showing on, on Saturday, we've got two private parties coming in. So that's one of the reasons we haven't had it earlier.